Father's Day to all of our fathers in the congregation and watching online. Um, let us, um, <clears throat> if you'll stand, let us sing um, our call to worship, I Will Serve Thee. In you, O oh God, every family on earth receives its name. Illuminate the homes of the earth with the light of your love, granting courage to those who are hurt or lonely, endurance to those who care for sick family members, and wisdom to those in fearful times of change. We thank you for the gifts of love we, we have received from mother, father, spouse, child, or companion. As we have been loved by you, by others, so may we love. Grant us your peace through Jesus Christ. Amen. You'll turn to page 330 in uh, your... Was it Faith Hymns? Favorite Hymns, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. 
Again, good morning and thank you for joining us. Um, we do have a few announcements. Um, we will not be having service this evening because it is Father's Day, so our evening Bible or our prayer service is canceled this evening. Spend time with your families. There will be a, um, a board meeting after church in the back of the sanctuary, um, so please stay for that. Um, midweek Bible study at 6.30, back of the sanctuary, and um, we are wrapping up, I believe, our lesson on the creed and starting into the Leviticus. So uh, please come out and join us. And if you haven't been, we'd love to have you. It's, it's a great discussion group. Um, we learn a lot. So just come out and join us. Um, next week, um, we did just come back from annual conference. Next week, I'll be doing a little wrap-up of what was discussed at conference, the resolutions that were passed, and some of the business. So um, if you're interested uh, or you have any questions after that, please let me know. But I will do it during the service. Um, in June next week, there will be an ice cream social at 5 p.m., so please come out and join us. That will be in the basement. Um, upcoming events for July um, the 10th is an admin council after Sunday school, and on the 17th is a UMW meeting at 5 p.m. Are there any other announcements that I've missed? Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Um, tomorrow at, I don't know the time. 4.30 will be Bill's memorial service here in the sanctuary. Um, and I'm so sorry for your all's loss. I'm, I'm sorry? Visitation at 3.30? Okay, visitation is at 3.30 and the service will start at 4.30. So, um, any other announcements? Okay. Um, let us stand for the affirmation of faith. It's on page 882 in your United Methodist hymn. I do not have a copy of. <laughs> Please join. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Does children's sermons and I did not prepare one. Does anybody have one? Okay, if not, we'll just go past that and we will do our tithes and our offerings. Can I have the ushers come, please? Our gracious Heavenly Father, who will be with us today. Give us your strength and your wisdom and bless those, Lord, that are hurting and suffering. Bless this offering that it be used for this church and for your service and for your message. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen.
stand and uh, turn to page 452 in your favorite hymns of praise. Concerns? Please remember my sister's band issues and please encourage her again. Okay. Yeah. I remember my blended uh, time family. Okay. We obviously want to remember the Kellys today. David Murray, okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Are there any praise reports today? Go ahead, Thank God I'm here today. <laughs> Amen. I found out the doctor's biopsy, so I can't be back next week, so I will not have surgery. Good. Wonderful. Good. Good. Heather, yeah, I have another prayer request. My daughter in law drove all the way from Oklahoma yesterday. Her mother, Marge Parker, I know that she usually watches, and we do love and we miss you guys. Any others? Prayer request or uh, yay gods? Either one? Turn it over to Pastor Robert. Good morning. morning. Let me share with you uh, the ones we've had here, and uh, the, besides the ones we shared this morning. Um, of course, we do want to remember those foster families. Um, I know we can't normally give a lot of details, but I will say one of them um, has a new addition in the family, which is a pretty good thing, but we want to continue to pray for them. Um, this week, for clergy who are moving in the West Virginia Conference, that's starting to happen this coming week. So pray for those pastors who are relocating and heading to new, uh, new locations. Uh, during the uh, annual conference last week, the bishop officially fixed the appointments, so you guys are officially stuck with me for at least another year. Um, but the ones who are moving, are, that's beginning this week. Uh, of course, we want to remember, as we've said, the Kelly family... Um, We'll never be able to replace Bill. Nobody like him. I want to remember the Cochran family also. Um, Earl Cochran, the former pastor at Mount Tabor, uh, passed away this past Sunday. And uh, so we want to remember his family as well. Thank you. Um, still know that there are a number of people without power, so we want to pray for those folks. Uh, we're getting a little break in the weather these today, thankfully, but it's been awful hot and without air conditioning for some folks that can get dangerous we want to pray for those folks and pray for the linemen who are out there working to restore power because there's a lot of people a lot of people involved in that uh, i want to pray for bob and marge jones this morning also uh, bob has been uh, placed in a nursing home in the last uh, week or so and uh, so that's that's been difficult for him and for marge oh i have tabers don't i we still want to remember them but Okay, well, that's fine. Um, yeah, because I wrote the others on here. Um, one other one that, that I do want to share, and that is that my little cousin, Kaylee, who, or KT, <laughs> uh, who is about 10 years old, is uh, in the hospital at uh, Women's and Children's right now. Um, they live in Bluefield, but they came up here, and uh, she has... A lot of difficulties going on. Uh, it would take me a while to explain all of it, 
Um, she's had some developmental things that she's dealt with her whole life and some other things that are, are going on right now. So just pray for her and pray for her mom, whose name is Stephanie, and her older sister, Emily. Um, they are just trying to walk through it and figure out exactly what's going on, but it's been a, been a difficult few days there as well, so we want to remember them. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, as we come this morning, we come always thankful for your goodness and your kindness to us, and Lord, thankful for each day you give us. We're thankful for the praises that were lifted this morning and, and the good news that's been received about biopsies that are negative, surgeries that are not necessary, and folks who are, are just glad to be here today. We're thankful that you know, even though Heather and I have dealt with COVID and then dealt with another bug, mm -hmm. After that, that we have recovered and that things are good and that we are negative as regards all of the worst things. And, and Lord, there are a lot of blessings. We're thankful for that. But Lord, we do come this morning as a, a, a group, as a church family who is hurting. And Lord, knowing that there is uh, especially a family within this church family that is hurting this morning as well. Lord, losses are tough. And Lord, we, we come in that. We know that you know that, and we know that you're present with us through it. Lord, we pray first for the Kelly family, that you would bless them and surround them with your peace, surround them with your comfort in these days. And Lord, walk with them through the coming days and weeks and months when things get difficult and things are uncertain and things are hard. Lord, be there, be present, and be present in a way that it is unmistakable. Bring your peace. Bring comfort, bring joy from the memories. And uh, Lord, just surround this family today in a special way. Lord, as an extension of that, surround this church family too. In that same way, be present with us, walk with us, stay close by. And Lord, send your comfort and your peace to all who are hurting and grieving today. Lord, we think of the foster families who we lift so often and Ask that you would bless them, and Lord, especially as when in one of the families we know there are uh, some new additions happening, and that is a blessing. But Lord, be with this this particular family as they navigate those. Lord, we know as the clergy in the conference, the ones that are moving are preparing to do that. We know today is going to be a tough day in a lot of those churches for for a lot of reasons. Lord, a lot of goodbyes and a lot of changes, and those are always tough. We pray that you'd be with the clergy who are making the transitions that this would be a day of celebration and that the coming days would be days when you work quickly and powerfully in their new ministries. And Lord, for the churches that are undergoing the transitions as well, we pray that you would bless them, Lord, that you would grant them stability and grant them peace and that the, the outgoing pastor would be, welcome, or would be celebrated and blessed and that the incoming pastors would be welcomed and, and that uh, you would be glorified in the midst of all of that. Lord, we think of the Cochran family this morning on the death of Earl, and we know that's been a difficult thing, too, for so many who knew him. Lord, what a wonderful, joyous ambassador for you he was. Lord, continue to bless that family in the coming days and weeks in the same ways that we've prayed this morning. Lord, with your peace and your presence and your comfort to just surround them where they are today. Lord, we think of those who are without power and ask that there would be relief from that. Lord, we know there are so many linemen working on the lines, and we pray that you'd bless them in their work, and the Lord, that you would make it expedient, that you would make it quick, and the Lord, that folks would be able to get that relief from the heat, because as the temperature rises again over the next few days, Lord, we pray that if those without air conditioning would find ways to cool down, find places to go, and, and Lord, that it would not become a situation that is dangerous for them. Lord, we think this morning of, of Katie in the hospital and, and Lord, the, the many, many issues and needs that are there with her. Lord, we pray that you would touch her first and foremost. Lord, we know kids have a special place in your heart and in your world. And Lord, we ask especially that you would touch her this morning, that you would help her through this. Lord, that you'd be with her mom, Stephanie, and her older sister, Emily, and surround them too. Lord, fill that hospital room with your presence and be with them powerfully today. Lord, for Linda's sister, Lord, we know that there are a lot of health issues and things going on there. We pray for your healing touch on her, Lord, that you would touch her leg. Lord, we know she's had to go through one amputation already and 
Pray that she will not need another. Lord, for your healing power to rest and dwell on her today in a mighty way. Lord, for the, the family that was lifted of Belinda, I think it is, we ask that you would touch her as well. Lord, that you would move in your power and meet her needs and be present with her today. Lord, for David Murray, Mickey's pastor back in Texas, we pray that you would touch him as well with your healing power. Lord, rest on him this morning. Just place your hands on him and flood him with your healing power and grace today. Lord, that, that whatever is needed would be met. And Lord, whatever needs healed would be brought to completion. Lord, touch him today powerfully. Surround him and go with him. Lord, for Linda's daughter-in-law who's driven in for... I believe her name was Marge. Lord, we pray that you'd be with, with that whole family as well. Lord, we know things are in a tough place. And Lord, we know that you are the one who sustains us through those things. And so we lift this family to you this morning as well. Lord, we think of Barb Star also and Ira too. And, and Lord, we know it's been a struggle for them over the last few weeks and months. We pray that you would bless Barb this morning in a mighty way. Lord, continue to touch her with your healing power, with your strength, and with your comfort. And Lord, surround them both with your presence today. Lord, lift up Ira too and bless them both in a mighty way. Lord, be with us throughout the rest of this service. Be with us at the communion table and meet us powerfully, Lord, as only you can do and as you do through this sacrament in such a special way. Bless us and keep us today. We ask it in the name of Christ. Amen. Well, as I am going ahead and, and hooking this up, which I left in the office <laughs> before I walked out here, if you have your Bibles, you're welcome to go ahead and turn to Psalm 42. That is where we're going to be spending some time this morning. All right, let's try that. <laughs> it's probably a little easier that way. If I move a little bit, you can still hear me. Psalm 42. This was the, the lectionary psalm for this week, but it ended up feeling very appropriate because initially I was going to come back from conference and go a whole different direction. And, and uh, before even uh, the events later this week and the, the unexpected loss of Bill, um, I was already kind of feeling nudged that this this part of the scripture and, and this was an area that we kind of needed and and I just um, this is <laughs> it's safe to say this has been a difficult week and uh, and I think that that extends in a lot of directions in some way or another for all of us I mean I've talked to a number of you this morning and I feel like all of us are dealing with more than one thing today. Um, I mean, I know for just for Heather and I, it's been COVID, and then it was the, the post-COVID fatigue, and then we went to conference, which was wonderful, and then got home from conference, and it was like the first day where we didn't have anywhere that we had to go. It was like all we could do was sleep, and I could not get out of the recliner on Monday for anything. It's like I couldn't wake up, and then, uh, and then, of course, losses that we've dealt with, with Earl Cochran passing away last Sunday, and and on a much smaller scale, but still difficult if you've ever been through it, we lost a pet this week. We lost one of our cats. And, uh, of course, then Bill at the end of the week, and, and uh, we kind of join everyone in those much larger losses, of course, with Tabor and, and Earl and here with Bill. And These are weeks and days and moments where it can just really feel exceedingly difficult with, with all of the multiple things that we shoulder, that we carry, can, can get to a place where it feels like it's much too much. We can slip into that place where it's real, where, or, as the scripture will read this morning, that our, our souls are in a, a real downcast kind of, uh, kind of area. And that's understandable. I mean, those emotions and those things we deal with are all very real and, uh, and very expected. And, and oftentimes, difficult enough, the Bible has no simple answers. But make no mistake, it has answers. A lot of times they are difficult reasons and purposes and those kind of things escape us. But <laughs> there's always one of those. There's always a, a pivot after 
a long list like that. And and it is this, that we can still run to God for those things that we know, in hope, in peace, in rest, and in comfort. Those things are always sure. They can never fail. The Psalms are full of those things. And full of the writings of people who have been through days like these and places like these. And so as we read the words of the psalmist this morning, let this be God's word speaking to us and speaking into us and speaking into the situations that we all find ourselves and speaking through us. Let's join today. We will read the whole psalm. It's just 11 verses long. Psalm 42. The scripture says this. As a deer pants for flowing streams, so my soul pants for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my food day and night, while they say to me all the day long, Where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I would go with the throng and lead them in procession to the house of God with glad shouts and songs of praise, a multitude-keeping festival. Why are you cast down, O my soul, and why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. My soul is cast down within me, therefore I remember you. From the land of Jordan and of Hermon and from Mount Mizar, deep calls to deep, at the roar of your waterfalls. All your breakers and your waves have gone over me. By day the Lord commands his steadfast love, and at night his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why do I go mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? As with a deadly wound in my bones, my adversaries taunt me, while they say to me all the day long, where is your God? But why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God. For I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. Let's pray together. Lord, this is a tough morning. In a tough few days. Lord, we come to you thankfully knowing you are well aware of that. Lord, remind us always in these times and places that we can hope in you. No matter what. No matter what. That our hope is found in you. Lord, surround us this morning. Fill this place with your presence. Because, Lord, we need you today. Anoint this message, Lord, that somehow, through the foolishness of preaching, that you would be glorified. And, Lord, that you alone would be glorified. Bless us and keep us today. We ask this in the name of Christ. Amen. As we look at this, I want to point out just a few things. It's probably not going to be a long message. But the first is actually the, the, thank you, the heading of the psalm. And this is interesting to me. It's actually right before verse 1, like right at the beginning. You see that thing that says, for the choir master, a maskil of the sons of Korah. You find those in the front of a lot of psalms. It sort of sets the, the scene for why the psalm was written or how the psalm was to be used. The, the sons of Korah were charged of leading in worship. We know that from Second Corinthians in chapter 20, it tells us that. And we're not entirely sure what the word masculine means, but we're pretty sure it comes from Hebrew words that mean either wisely crafted or something that helps to bring wisdom, something that we learn from. So the heading all together seems to mean that this was something that was used in worship, was used when everyone was gathered together, and that it kind of was for instruction in the sense that it would kind of give some instruction about how to walk through and how to praise God in 
the toughest of days and the hardest of times. Something that helps us learn how to be in these kind of places. Something that is shared together in worship. Folks, being together in the tougher days and times is so important. And I think that's been magnified the last couple of years when we've had to isolate so much out of necessity. And when we were first able to come back together in the sanctuaries, remember how that felt? And how, how wonderful that was, not just to be in the familiar room, but to be around the family of God together, close together. That's, that's so important in moments like this. It was important then we kind of realized how much we'd missed it how much we needed it, but how much more important is it in these downcast kind of times that we come together, yes? Worship is first and foremost about meeting and worshiping God, but we do that together. So we surround each other, we hold each other up. So even in just the heading, we get some lessons about the the rest of the worship to follow. And then we get down into the meat of the psalm and the writer's external circumstances all seem to be pressing in. They feel like they're crushing too much. They say, where is your God? Have you ever been in that place? And, you know, if God really cared, then this wouldn't have happened. Or if God was really real, then this wouldn't have happened. Or if God loved me, this, we would have never gone through this. I mean, a lot of people have been in a lot of those places. And that's okay. That's where the psalmist is writing from. His emotions are a jumble. He's cast down in his soul. He repeats that in verse 5 and verse 6 and verse 11. He's in turmoil in those same verses also. That's a real specific word. It's like he's twisted up. There's, the things are spinning out of control and I can't stand up under them. And it's too much and it's too hard and it's too sad. And I'm losing my grip and I can't control it. And I can't hold on to it. And even a little degree of it's not fair. And it's not right. All of that is kind of bound up in these turmoil and downcast places. And in fact, he's so crushed that he says in verse 3 that his tears have been his food day and night. In other words, he's not eating because he can't stop crying. In verse 7, it's so much that he feels like he's drowning. That all your breakers and waves have gone over me, so overwhelmed and so run down and wrung out and run over with it all that he just almost can't go on and yet in all of this there is still hope and he's fighting for it because he knows it's there why are you cast down why are you in turmoil what does it say after that hope in God for I shall praise him again my rock or my salvation and my God. Shall is such an important word there because it's definitive. I know I will. I shall praise him again. Why? Because of who he is. Because of what he is. My salvation and my God. Salvation. When we talk about salvation, most of us have a picture in our minds immediately, right? What do you think of? Don't everybody answer at once. You think, do you think about being saved from sin usually when we hear that word? Somebody comes to the altar, they find salvation. Absolutely. And that's, that's a perfectly good and right way to use that word. But it's not the only way to use that word. That word is so important here because salvation at its base level means to be delivered from something. The writer here is sure and relying on God's ability to deliver him through the time he's going through. And folks, we can be absolutely sure of this, that God has not changed. If he was good enough to be relied on to deliver through whatever situation the psalmist was writing about, that he is good enough to be relied on to deliver us through whatever we might face today or any time. He delivers us. Sometimes deliverance is less about being delivered from something as it is to be delivered through something. And that still gives us hope, though, because that means that if God is doing the delivering, then we are never, ever alone. No matter the storm, no matter the circumstance, no matter the loss. And if God is doing the delivering, and He is, then we are never, ever alone. 
We can know that and be sure of that, that he will be true and faithful to walk with us through the whole thing and forever after that. Because folks, it doesn't stop at the end of our lives here. He walks forever with us in eternity also. He will never, ever abandon us in the middle of our sorrows. In fact, the scripture promises that in another place. In Psalm 34, 18, it says the Lord is near to the brokenhearted, that he saves those who are crushed in spirit. So the hope of the psalmist is our hope also. That we shall praise him because who is he? He is my salvation. He's my deliverer to and through and from everything that we can possibly encounter. And he is our God, our ruler, our king, our, our benevolent Lord, always. How does he do that? How do we, how do we grab onto that? It actually goes back to the very first two verses of the psalm. Because the psalmist talks about it right there at the beginning. He's longing for God. The same way that a thirsty deer pants for the water or that one of us might long for a cool drink of water after being out mowing the lawn or a hot day when the air conditioner isn't working. You just long for something to quench that in you. That earnest need, that longing that is in us, the only water that can slake that deep thirst within us comes from God. And he thirsts for God. And so we must always, and when we do, he answers. And he becomes that thing, that one that satiates the appetency of our souls, that fills that need inside, that fills that longing for peace and times of grief and fills the memories of loved ones as we mourn and comforts us through it, steadies us, strengthens us with living water when we feel like we can't go another step. The message of this morning is ultimately very simple and the hardest most difficult of times and the deepest throes of sorrow, hope in God. It is emblazoned over the door out here. It is the very first thing that I saw when I walked into this church the very first time. And at that point, I was a brand new pastor. I hadn't even technically become the pastor. I was coming in to meet with all of you and I was scared to death. And that was the first thing I saw, the first thing I knew of this church. Was hope in God was emblazoned over the doors. And folks, when we hit days like this, that's what we hold on to. It's a directive, something that we're told to do, but it's something that we have. It's something that we grab onto. We have hope. We have it in God. We always will, and it will never fail. He will never leave. He will never forsake you. He will never abandon you in your sorrow. It will strengthen the weariest and the weakest. And those waves and breakers become a little different when it's the waves of the love and the peace of God that begin to wash over us. We feel overwhelmed. Even in the most impossible of circumstances, in all times, hope in God. Amen? As we move to the table this morning, I uh, just want to make totally clear a couple of things for, for anyone who has not taken communion with us before. Uh, first of all, you are welcome. We have an open communion table. You don't have to be a member of this church. You don't have to be a Methodist. You don't have to have been going here for any specific length of time. You just have to want to come to the table. It is open and available for, for all because it's not our table anyway. This is Christ's table. And Christ said, all who are thirsty, come to me. Well, all who wish to come to the table, you come. We're not in the business of turning anybody away here. Um, You do not have to mask up or glove up. I will do that because I will be handling the elements, the bread and the cup. And I just want to make sure, you know, an extra level of protection that if I've come into contact with any kind of something that I don't give it to you. So, but the rest of you are welcome to not do that. You're welcome to if you want to, but you certainly don't have to. Um, I think I'm going to ask um, Heather if you will assist me up front, and Jim if you will help dismiss folks to come forward. Um, But as we we do that, we'll, we'll consecrate communion here, 
and I will probably leave my mask and gloves off for the large part of that, and then when I uncover the, the elements that will be distributing the congregation, I will mask up and glove up before that. Uh, if you would, uh, pick up your United Methodist hymnal and turn to number 13 and be in the middle of a service of word and table number two. We'll join there at the Great Thanksgiving. And the only other note I have is if it's difficult for you to come forward or you're not able to come forward, we will bring it back to you. So uh, don't let that be any kind of hindrance uh, to you receiving communion. If it's difficult to come up after we're done, just wave at us and we'll, we'll bring it right back to you. Page 13, if you're hymn, in your hymnal, if you would stand, if you're able, and if not, stand in your spirit. Thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity and made covenant to be our sovereign God and spoke to us through your prophets who looked for that day when justice shall roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. When nations shall not lift up sword against nation, and neither shall they learn war anymore. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release from the captives and the recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. And by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. At his ascension, you exalted him to sit and reign with you at your right hand. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, our Lord Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. For this cup is the new covenant of my blood, which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving, as a holy and living sacrifice, in union with Christ's offering for us, as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come again. again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here, and on these gifts of bread and the fruit of the vine. Make them to be for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ that we might be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This is the body of Christ, broken for you. And the blood of Christ, shed for you. My friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving. Amen. Heather, if you would come to assist me, please. You may be seated. Musicians and our usher.
waiting in the back. Please, if you're on the council, stick around for that. And those services tonight, because Father Day and Family Times. Let's close. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in the knowledge of the love of God the Father and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain in you now and always. Amen.